Yeah, hi, uh, hi, good morning. Sorry for inconvenience. I think I dropped in message in the group. I have internet connectivity issue. Okay, so I think Shiva, you are not there in that group, right? I'm adding you in the group so that you will be also getting the communication. Can you able to hear me? Yep, good morning, Ravindra. Good morning. Okay, so I'm just adding the Shiva as well. And uh, I just need one more who is the, if I just discuss with Suresh. So this 370576, I'm not still not finding who is the name. Can you able to hear me? Uh, okay, if it's not there, okay, I'll just talk to Suresh then. Suresh related to society. Okay. Okay, so uh, can I start? Can I think it's already too late. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nita, good morning. Nita, good morning. Saila. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we are discussing about the master data. Okay. Next, yesterday we uh, we discussed about the different types of data, how we can segregate the data like configuration data, transactional data, master data. So what is the difference between these three? Transactional data is the like uh, daily operations um, in the business, what operations they are performing, that they will be performing in the system that usually you end users and super users and uh, the, uh, the workers, soft floor workers, they will be using this transactional data. And uh, the configuration data is nothing but like, it is a kind of the design which what client is looking into that, that design we are performing in the configuration data. And coming to the master data, this is the one-time records that is uh, using for the purpose of that, uh, running the transaction data. So irrespective of every time I'm, I'm entering all the manual data, manually all the data, irrespective of that, I can maintain one master data, which is a permanent value, permanent, maybe it's, uh, it's randomly changing or it may be, Okay, long term, I can maintain the same data, which is like description of the material, which will not be changed. Base unit of measure, it will not be changed like that. This kind of the data I can maintain as a master data that I can use the reference to perform the transaction data. So these are the three types of that data we have. Okay. Now coming to the master data, we are talking about that. So as of now, we discussed about the transaction data in the above, the process wise, subcontracting, consignment, pipeline, Okay, RTP, invoice plan, all this process, all it will be transactional data. So it is a daily operations business process. And now we are discussing about the business, uh, master data, what we have the master data. Okay, so why we need these master data, transactional data? Because uh, you said that we are the functional consultant, we are performing the configuration data only. So why we need transactional data and master data? Because you must be aware about that. What is the functionality of the each and every transaction code? Then only you can perform the configuration data. If the client is saying that my business is like this one, so you must be understand that. So, so in respect of the configuration data, you must be understand about the master data, how it will works and the transaction data, how it will work. Then only you can perform the configuration data. Clear now? That's what we are discussing about the transaction data and master data. Okay. So uh, let's come to the master data. What we have, we have the material master record, vendor master record, pur purchasing info record, source list, condition records, code arrangement, service master records. This kind of the master data we have in the material management. Okay. So every module have the they have own their their master data. So it is this is the material management master data. So coming to master data, what is the material master data? So metal master data is nothing but like any product. When you are introducing any product, any 
component or any product or any finished goods or any semi semi finished goods or finished goods anything which when you are planning to buy the product or when you planning to produce the product okay when planning to consume the product so there must be you aware about that what what kind of the product it is what is the description of product and how you are measuring that one so there's those information it is required so in the material material master record what information it will be there it will be related to material we can say material or we can say product also okay both are same okay product or material okay so any product the basic information of that product and to perform the transactions from the each and every area what information it is required that we are maintaining in the metal master record so when we are talking about the metal master record okay, you also need to be understand that what kind of the type what kind of the material you are planning to create that means what type of the material you are planning to create so what are the materials we have what type of the materials we have generally we are dividing like raw materials okay then packing materials then semi finished goods okay then uh, finished goods okay then we have the trading goods so why i'm just dividing like this type of material because based on the type of material i can justify that okay this material i can use for the only purchasing i am not producing this product okay packing materials these are the only we are using for the packing purpose okay a semi finished goods they are these are the products which we are buying from outside sometimes and we are producing inside if it is finished good then we are only producing this product we are not buying from the outside so like type of the material we can okay we can understand that okay what kind of the material it is how we are using furtherly in the my organization so the type of the material is very important that we call as a material type so same attributes of the material types we are considering same attributes of the materials we are considering to the one material type okay so every type of the material we have the one code standard sap code or you can create your own style of the code also okay so if you see that raw material it is roh so it is a code which is abbreviation the sap which is providing that when there is roh that is a that kind of the that type of the materials are raw material okay so like pack material erp semi finished goods halb like that we have the different different uh, types of there so okay we have so many things are there almost it is like 20 30 material types are there okay so you when you are starting to practicing on that you can easily uh, uh, maybe remember uh, reminder that all these things remember that all these pro product names okay product types okay so when you creating any product that means if i have the uh, water so this water we are using as a raw material okay because in my in my company if that is a raw material maybe some other company it is a finished goods okay if suppose oil is there so if i'm just go to oil manufacturing industry from their side oil is the finished goods from my side if i'm just using that product as a component so it's my side is raw material it's a raw material so so you have to be decided that when you creating the product in my company you have to be decided that how you want to be use that product that whether you want to be used as a component or whether you want to be used as a packing material whether you want to be used as a finished goods okay based on that you selection the further lead in the transactional letters whether you want to be procured the material or you want to be produced the material or you want to be sell the sell to the customer like we can define okay clear clear yes yeah okay now material type is different material group is different again okay so metal group is different group of materials these are so, so group of the materials which is same kind of the materials like if it is oil is there sunflower oil is there palm oil is there okay then uh different different oils are there right uh, or virgin oils is are there so these are different different oils are there so what kind of oil so what kind of the group it is so it is oil group that's all okay but here we are telling that what type of the material it is 
okay so metal group is different metal type is different clear na okay so these are all information we are entering in the metal master record when you creating the product name okay so understand the sap the product name so we are entering that all this information so what information it is required other than this one if suppose this material we are planning to buy okay then you must be know about that if you want to purchase this product what kind of the information it is required so that information we are maintaining if you are suppose this product you are selling to the customer then what kind of the information it is required to create the sales order for this material okay if you are planning to buy like if you want to be store okay storage storage purpose then what kind of the information it is required to store this one that means which bin you want to be which which bin you want to be store okay how you are how you are how you want to be measure that in your store location and what is the shelf life for this because in the store location okay i also need to be know that when it will be expiring okay if i don't know expiring date and all then it's very difficult right to store that product because after two years three years if i just see that product it is all damaged and spoiled then that will be damaging to other products as well right so you must be aware about that what shelf life and remaining shelf life those information also it is required so like if it is suppose planning if it is a planning for the mrp okay then you must be know about that what information it is required like we have the different different data we have to maintain for this material so these are the we called as a views in sap we calling as a views views are departments okay so the department is nothing but like a purchasing department sales department store department planning department like that we are just saying or in the simple sap words it is the views which view which view it is like purchase not audible ravindra hello hello yeah is it disconnected yeah. it was disconnected how, how long back it is disconnected two minutes back okay where we are in that time uh, you were telling about views ha ah, okay okay so you okay so okay then so uh, yeah yeah so this is completed screen. right ravind okay okay i'm just sharing screen okay maybe yeah. some network issue okay 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 now see that uh, so you you understand about purchasing data sales data store data right uh, that i cover right yes okay okay so when you creating any product so what you need to do you must be uh, defining that what data which is required if you suppose this material is i'm buying from outside then you must be maintain the purchasing data okay and if you planning to sell the goods to the customer okay sales purpose then you must be maintain the sales data so the system will be taking the reference data from the metal master record what data it is maintain in the sales what data it is maintain in the purchasing what data it is maintain in the store that information based on that it will be defining the sales order clear is that clear so that information it is we are maintaining in the metal master record so like right. Uh, yeah please so whenever we are creating any material mm -hmm. in the system at mm -hmm. that time we have to define the views or department so that it will be accessible to respective department right correct exactly okay yeah that means uh, they can uh, they can perform the their transactions and moreover they will be getting the information from master data respect to master data information suppose okay this suppose which i have the subcontracting process or maybe i have the consignment process okay so what kind of the information which is required okay if it is a standard procurement to pay cycle then what information it is required okay we have some uh, 
payment terms or maybe if we have the purchasing value key like uh, reminders so how long you need to send the reminders for this material okay and whether it is using for the any source list you are maintaining or not who is the buyer group who are who are the buyer group who who is handling that all this information we are maintaining okay if it is sales related then whether these are the taxable products or non-taxable products okay whether it is a fully tax or it is a 50 percent tax so all this information it will be maintained in the metal master record clear is that clear yeah yeah okay so this is the what we are defining in the metal master record okay now coming to when the master record what is the what information generally it will be have when the master record Generally, if I want to be select any supplier, so generally what information we are taking from the supplier master record. So vendor and supplier both are same. Supplier name, location, address, contact details. Are we connected? Hello. I don't know why it is connect disconnect screen. It was disconnected. Okay. So okay, I'll I will just try again. Okay. In case if anything which is uh, having the problem, then we'll uh, close the call today. Huh? Yeah. Okay, so vendor master data. Okay, so address information, phone number information, email address, bank details. Okay, then uh, NEFT information. Okay, time some conditions. Because you enter to vendor, there's time some conditions also, it is different, right? Okay, then payment terms. Okay, in core terms and the currency, how you are paying to the this vendor, the currency. Okay, like all this information, it will be there with with respect to vendor. Okay, that means if I want to perform the any purchase order, if I want to perform any contract, anything, what information it is required, that information we are maintaining in the vendor master. Okay, clear. Yeah. So, so that I, if I see that master data, then I can see that okay, he is from the India, he is from the US, he is from the Europe, like that. I can easily find it. Somewhere. Okay, so that's the information we are maintaining in the vendor master record. Okay, then coming to the purchasing info record. The next one is purchasing info record. So, what is the meaning of the purchasing info record? So, purchasing info record is nothing but like a okay, the material was material and vendor combination the material vendor combination in under purchasing organization okay and plan okay respect to plan what are the information it is there suppose i have the material which is like okay i have material which is samsung tv okay or okay, samsung tv which is there so the suppliers are the the suppliers are reliance digital okay then I have the uh, maybe I can get directly from the Samsung store. Okay. Then I have I will be getting from the Chrome. Okay. So multiple suppliers are there. So irrespective of the each and every supplier, there might be the prices are different, right? Now, time, time some conditions are different. So if I just product, if I'm just buying from the Reliance Digital, there might be prices uh, maybe it is uh, twenty thousand rupees. Okay, if it is a Samsung store, they're saying that okay, additionally, which is like company rolls and all, they're saying that 21,000 rupees. Okay, so Chrome, they're saying that they are having some offers and all, they're saying that 19,000 rupees. So, irrespective of the each and every supplier for this same product, they might be have the different, different price, pricing brochures, different, different pricing prices, and uh, different, different discounts, terms some conditions, payment terms, income terms, salesperson. Okay the who will be the handling this buyer groups everything it will be different so here what we are discussing in the purchasing info record 
the above in the metal master record and vendor master record having that individually de data that means specific to the material or specific to the vendor that means individually it is like material information or vendor information but now i'm just defining in the purchasing info record the combination between the material and vendor for this purchasing organization plan why i'm just saying this purchasing organization plan because if it is same material same uh, supplier okay if I, he is supplying in the hyderabad okay that might be the cost will be different if it is a maybe if it is a bangor branch then it is a cost will be different if it is mumbai branch it is a different right so plan to plan and a purchasing organization to organization could be different data right so that's what we are maintaining in the purchase info card we are maintaining that material and vendor combination for the purchasing organization and plant combination we are maintaining the data clear is that clear yes okay so each material with the combination of with permutation and combination between the suppliers we are maintaining each info card okay yes okay this is the purchasing info card then what is the next we are maintaining like source list okay so by naming itself you can easily identify that what is the meaning of source list source means who are the persons where they are supplying this course source of supplies okay source of supply and uh, vendor and supplier are all are the same okay so the naming word is same okay sources also it is same our sources also we sometimes we calling as a sources okay who is the sources get the stock okay so source list is nothing but like a list of the suppliers list of the suppliers for this material under plan okay so we are just maintaining that the list of the all the suppliers who are there so if suppose this samsung store it is it is there across the all the global but if i see the chrome it is there only in the within india okay if suppose reliance digital it is there it is there maybe two to three countries so like it is a different different uh, branches might be having that different different suppliers list. maybe local suppliers bajaj electronics is there it is the only will be located in the some areas it is not located in the across the all the india right so you can maintain that list of the all the suppliers list for the this product under this plan okay we are maintaining that all this information in the source list okay so that they, tomorrow if somebody they are looking at it, what are the suppliers we have we can just go there in the list and I can see that okay in this plant we have this much of the sources this much of the suppliers clear is that clear yes okay so that is called source list okay so it's not only maintaining the source it is not only maintaining the list of the suppliers it is also doing like okay blocking the supplier blocking the supplier in the specific period okay suppose let's say okay uh, ice cream is there suppose let's say ice cream is there okay so in the summer season okay this was just too demanded okay and if i see that winter season it is a very less demanded okay so it's less demanded okay okay then what i'm just planning that i i'm i'm running the restaurant okay so when it is a summer season okay so it's very difficult to get the ice cream from the suppliers so what i'm doing that even if it is a costly because we need to be maintain some standards even it is expensive i'm just buying this from the one vendor he is giving the in the summer season also okay but the regular vendors may be okay so let's say vendor a okay i'm just putting one example vendor a vendor b and vendor c okay now this vendor a is saying that always it is like 110 rupees and the, the vendor b is saying that it is almost it is always 100 rupees and vendor c is saying that it is like 90 rupees okay so generally uh, the ice cream when i'm getting very less cost okay i'm just going with this vendor and i will be purchasing but my i have the some problem okay 
what is the problem when there is a summer season he is just skipping the my orders he is not sending properly the orders okay okay so maybe they because of the two demand and other things so he is not supplying the course then in that in that time i can approach to the this guy with our this guy because they have all they have all the stock but they are demanding little bit high price but it is a it is must and should i should have the, that stock because my vendor is uh, giving the less price i agree that but he is not supplying properly on the summer season so what i can do okay i am just uh, releasing that okay vendor a is the my uh, vendor for the summer season so the the specific period i can put it like this is the my regular vendor and some specific per period i can put like this is the my vendor okay so like i can divide it that so period to period also i can change the who is the my regular vendor and who is the my fixed vendor you can put so what it is he are saying that we can put that regular vendor regular vendor is nothing but like a fixed vendor okay so he is my always first option or we can block the vendor okay so block the vendor is nothing but like a, in suppose it's summer season unnecessary if it is a winter season unnecessary i don't want to buy from this vendor because it's already too expensive but there is no choice because i'm just buying from this vendor in the summer season so when it is come vendor season i'm just saying that okay i'm my fixed vendor is vendor c clear so basically block the vendor is nothing but the alternate supplier source in case of emergency ha huh, maybe uh, that is one option maybe you can quality if you are you just uh, checking that quality there might be quality is not good so my company decided that to block that vendor for 6 months okay That's Say anything, any option. Okay. Okay. So either alternative vendors, if you have, or maybe you are getting best vendor, and maybe you want to try with that vendor, and you are just blocking this vendor. So why we need this uh, uh, fixed vendors and block the vendor? When there is automation of the purchase orders creation, automation of the PR creation, okay, automation of contracts and staging agreements creation, okay. so the system always checking that what is the my fixed vendor okay so in that case we are using this source list as a reference okay clear okay okay so that's what the source list any questions on the source list no no anyone have a question okay okay so uh, now has you know what we discussed about that uh, all related to material vendor and uh, the combinations and list of the vendors this four it is uh, specifically we are using for the pos and transactional data as where it is information now this is the condition record condition record is nothing but like a okay in respect to uh, suppose there is a i have the gold okay suppose let's say i'm the gold seller okay now what will be happen every day the price will be different for the day to day day to day day to day the price wise uh, fluctuation will be there okay so fl fluctuation is there so so every time i just go and changing into info record or changing into po for each and every purchase order it is very difficult right so what i will do i will be maintaining the condition record okay so condition record served up pricing conditions okay which we are defining that defining the price for specific period okay that means if suppose today and tomorrow if it is the same price okay i'm just putting like okay 1307 2023 to 1407 2023 okay this material cost is this material cost for the plant under this plant or under this plant and vendor okay this combination i'm just putting like that it is a 2000 rupees cost okay so that means when the po was created between these two periods okay the system automatically picking the price from this condition record okay so it might be for the basic price gross price or freight prices or maybe transportation packing charges anything anything which is if, if it is if system needs to be automatically finding the price 
that it will be finding from your conditional record. Clear? Yes. So basically, basically you can easily maintain that irrespective of your changing to POs, info records, irrespective of, you can easily maintain in the condition record for that condition. What pricing condition it is like. It is a gross price, it is a freight, it is a transportation, it is a packing, it is a labor cost, loading cost, un unloading cost, taxes, anything. Okay. So that we are maintaining the condition records. So condition yeah? record is uh, mainly a price related. Huh, it's mainly price related. Okay, there are so, so many things are there, but here we are talking about the pricing related. But okay. these condition records also we are using okay, some other different to condition records are there that is they are using for the output okay and uh, maybe they are searching for the batches so there also it is there the condition records but here we are discussing about this is the pricing related okay okay so basically condition records are search strategies okay so it is searching that if you maintain the condition that condition what value you maintain that value it will be picking that whether it is a price or it is a output or it is maybe batch, anything, it is basically search strategy. Searching the what if the it is searching that okay, search strategy you say. So what is the meaning of search strategy? Searching that if this record, if this record already maintained or not. This record maintained for the automation. Okay. So Example, I can say one more example. If suppose output determination is there, okay. So if it, there is a vendor A, okay, when a PO is created, we are always sending the hard copy. Hard copy means you are you need to take the printout. You need to take the printout and you are sending that hard copy to the vendor A. Then when I'm just sending to vendor B, okay, so this PO always is like a soft copy. So that means I'm not to, uh, I'm not taking the printout. I'm just taking the PDF conversion. Okay. I'm just taking the PDF conversion. That PDF conversion I'm just sending to the mail. Right. So that means vendor to vendor again, the medium is different. Again, printout, PDF conversion, okay, uh, fax, telex, whatever they are using, the functionality that we are sending. So how the system knows about that, whether this, when I'm using this vendor A, it must be hard copy or vendor B, it must be soft copy, that we are maintaining in the condition record. It's just kind of the one condition record. So basically condition records are such strategies which we are maintaining, which, which, which we are giving the condition. Okay, when this is applying that, then it should be work like this one. Okay, either it may be pricing condition or it may be uh, output condition or it may be batch also. So batch, what is the batch payment if suppose, okay, suppose uh, I'm planning to send the goods, customer uh, delivery is there. So they suppose let's say customer delivery is there. So I have the stock batch one, okay, and batch two and batch three. So like I have the stocks, different different batch stocks is there. So here uh, again, I have 10 pieces. Here also I have 10 pieces. Here also I have the 10 pieces. Okay, now the system is, uh, when it is allotting stock allocation, okay, when it is doing automatically the batch allocation, okay, system is confusing that which batch I want to select. So then in the records, condition records, I'm maintaining that, okay, you can take that first in, first out. I'm just giving the condition to the uh, condition records. When I'm using this customer delivery, okay, you must be used the first in, first out. First in, first out means, what is the first in, first out? Whatever it is created first, Okay, or whatever the product which is created first, manufactured first, okay, then you can distribute that product to the customer first. Okay, if I didn't give that, maybe the system will take leave for now, last in first out. Okay, so you must be tell to the system, okay, you just uh, batch allocate that, which batch I want to take based on the first in first out or last in first out or manufacturing date or it may be goods receipt date or what it is there. So that based on that, you must be give that. So the condition records are basically it's like such strategy, what condition you are giving based on that, it will be work. So, so I just maybe pricing condition. Yeah. Any condition we can put. Huh, any condition. 
again process to process this process is different yes. this process is different and the pricing procedure different process is different okay yes any condition, you can put any condition and write a customization also okay maybe you can put like priority one this stock should be moved priority two so that also you can design okay yeah. clear yes so that basically that is the condition record any questions no no okay so both okay everyone everyone you understand right what is that what is the condition record right okay now let's go to the quota arrangement quota i think you by looking into quota quota what is the meaning of quota what is the meaning of quota what is the meaning of quota reserve stock sorry reserve stock results uh, i didn't get it so can you repeat what is it reserve stock reserve stock okay not reserve stock okay so it is kind of the quota quota means what is the meaning of quota okay i'm just allotting to you 10 percent is quota you i'm allotting to you 20 percent quota that means what is the meaning of that i have the multiple supplier okay i have the multiple suppliers when i have the requirement when i have requirement okay i'm just giving that quotas to like 10 percent to vendor a 20 percent to vendor b 50 percent to vendor c like i'm just dividing that so i'm just managing to all so there is no fixed vendor for me all are at my vendors only so i'm just allotting that 10 percent quota to this vendor 20 percent to quota to this person and 30 percent to this quota vendor like i'm just dividing because why because if i have to you huge requirement okay if i cannot depend on one vendor right it's very difficult suppose he is, uh, didn't have the stock then again i have to search for some other supplier again that supplier don't have the stock so every time i just need to be such like that so i just giving that okay so today i have 100 requirement is there so 50 parts 50 i'm just buying from you 50 i'm buying from the different vendor okay so it's like a quota you are dividing like quotas clear yes okay again how the quotas will be work it's based on the minimum order order quantity so suppose the vendor having that this minimum order quantity suppose he's saying that i can take order minimum of thousand pieces okay so it means less than thousand pieces he will not be accepted so based on that also figures again the system will be allotting that what i allow clear okay. is that clear quota arrangement yes. okay yeah it's kind of a business now if i'm running the business i just want to be covered the board because i cannot depend one person he is a suppose suddenly he stopped the supplying or he is demanding lot then it's very problem to me right so i can manage to the n number of suppliers at a time right so in that case i can give quarters like that clear okay then the last one which is like uh, service anyway the service master data is for the you already know what is the service master record? Information related to services taken. Yeah. So why it is required a separate master record? What is, why we... Because services are different. Huh. What kind of different? Um... Okay. Basically... Manpower. Huh. So basically service master records are services are not uh, stockable material these are not stockable materials correct no okay these are not stock right these are the not inventory stock related okay it's kind of the service we just uh, taking that service from that vendor and we are paying that amount right now it may be cleaning painting or it may be uh, washing okay so all these things will come maybe installations okay all these kind of the things are coming under the services okay so these are not uh, stock related okay these are intangible not tangible goods right so in this case what will happen i cannot use the metal master card because metal master should be have the material number okay but here i don't have any material number because this is the services we don't have any code to store the stock right so this kind of the simply like painting this kind of the services like simply cleaning installation like each and every time it will be changing the word the service for norm okay so what we are doing here service master requests don't have any metal master record number okay 
without material number how you are handling your master data without material number how you are handling your data which is like a description base unit of measure and what type of the accountings should be impacted any formula calculation for the services all these things which is maintained in the service master clear so that service master records we are using for the service procurements clear yes okay so these are the master data we have in the sap okay so metal master record vendor master record purchasing info record source list condition records quota arrangement service master records these are the all the master data we have in the metal management so in interview if they're asking about what kind of the master data we have we must be tell that all this list of the master data clear yes okay okay so as of now we discussed about the transactional data so we discussed about the master data now configuration data will be performing the design when you are getting the requirement from the company okay you are designing to the has for the their uh, requirements so what is this configuration generally what kind of configuration it is there so can i go ahead for next topic Yep. Can I go ahead with the configuration? Okay. So yes, I'm my, okay yeah. So I'm just going with the client requirements. Suppose my client requirements, how it is like. So my client requirement is okay, they need some approval strategy. Okay. They want to be designed some approval strategy for the purchasing. Maybe I'm just taking the example of PO. Okay. So what they're asking about that. Okay. So when there is a domestic purchasing, there is domestic purchasing. Okay. So and when the price, okay, when the price is total purchasing price is suppose one lakh rupees or below one lakh rupees, okay, below one lakh rupees in Hyderabad branch, in a Hyderabad branch. Suppose I'm just putting like Hyderabad branch, okay. Okay, so what will be happen here? Okay, it is considering the three factors here. One is domestic purchasing. So how we can segregate this out domestic purchasing? Maybe based on the document type. So document type is the it, 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 it is like a domestic purchasing. It is a import purchasing. It is like service purchasing. Like I can differentiate. Then price, price total PO price. Anyway, it is we are entering that uh, all the condition pricing conditions based on that the PO price is calculating. Then then the branch which is like it is a plant what is a hydrobar plant it is a different different branches now when these three factors are matching okay my client is asking that you should be take approval approval from okay soft floor head soft floor head so he is a he is a person who is approving this kind of the pivots okay or he is saying that Okay, you also need to be take finance clerk, financial clerk whoever. So he is asking that when it is a less than one lakh rupees under this branch, under this domestic purchasing, the financial clerk and soft software head, these two are the persons who is approving this PO. Until it is approved, then we cannot process for the this to the next next process. Okay, so this is the my client requirement. Or Maybe if it is suppose the same same process same levels again now it is above one lakh above one lakh to again ten lakhs <coughs> okay so above ten lakhs above one lakh to below ten lakhs okay below ten lakhs so between these two when the P, there is a PO is created they say that instead of finance clerk this time I need to take the financial head approval. So software head and financial head, we need to take the approvals, then only this PO will be processed. So this is the client requirement. How you can design that? Okay, that you are designing in the configuration. What kind of what kind of a configuration is it? This is called release strategy. Okay, this is called release strategy. So in the release strategy, we we are defining that different kind of approval strategies and what is the conditions and what are the factors which is needs to be considered all these things we are defining in the release strategy. so this is the configuration okay that is a design approval design you are designing that 
okay so like you, you have the n number of configurations which is there that we are discussing when we are discussing about the transactional data and master data irrespective of the what to configuration it is required okay clear yes. okay so you understand right what is the difference now configuration master data and transactional data right any questions no, no, I'm good. Okay. Now, integration. Integration areas. Okay. So, I'm not strictly saying that you must be working in the MM. Okay. If suppose I'm working as a consultant, I'm not strictly saying that you must be working in your area. Because there are the, some integrated areas that also you must be aware about. That. Okay. Because uh, where exactly this integration areas is connected, if you are not aware about that, then it's very difficult to run the, your transaction. So what are the integration areas? So MM is connecting with WM, MM is connecting with FI, MM is connecting with PP, MM is connecting with QM, MM is connecting with ST, MM is connecting with PM, MM connecting with PS. So like different, different modules, they are connected. Why are they connecting? Because the respect to areas, the respect to transaction process, it is integrated. Suppose let's say, okay, after we receive the goods, okay, if we have the warehouse management, okay, so then we are integrating to the warehouse management people to put the stock. That means we are informing to the, that information to the put away information to the, the warehouse management team, the goods received to information to the warehouse management team, then they will be planned accordingly the put away and the removal they will be planning so what is the meaning of warehouse wm warehouse management management so what what kind of things they are doing warehouse management they are doing like packing okay they are doing like uh, put away okay they are doing like uh, removal okay they are doing like uh, uh, internal transfers okay so like they are doing all these things in, in between in, in, internally warehouse that means if you have the warehouse management the stock storing and uh, handling all will be taken care by warehouse management team. clear again loading unloading packing issue packing okay all these things will come under the response so what did they put away what is the meaning of put away Put away is nothing but like, hey, once we receive the stock, okay, if suppose, I will just give you a difference here. Okay, this is a one store location, and this is a one store location. Okay, so in this store location, what we have been, so this is the warehouse store location. Warehouse uh, store location. Then it is a normal store location, MM store location. What is the difference here? Okay, so if you see that in the warehouse store location, okay, so in the MM store location, it is like an open location. So once I receive the stock, I can just put into the my location, but exactly where you mentioned. You didn't mention that where exactly you are putting which location it which bin it is bin rack if it is i have the high racks are there which rack it is which storage section it is okay which storage bin it is we are not defining here but if it is the warehouse it is there then they can say that okay there is the high rack storage it is there this is first row second row third row and first column second column third column and you can define that where exactly it is suppose this product it is there here then I can say go that okay, one, two, three, four, five. So fifth row, fifth column, and third, second column. Okay, and it is a this is a bin. Exactly, it is located in this one. So if you have the warehouse bins, what will happen? It is very easy to identify that the product where exactly it is stored. If it is there is no warehouse bins, okay, then if it, there is no warehouse bin, then it is very difficult to find if suppose. There are so many products are it is there. Suppose here on here one product is there. Okay. 
Yeah, he, he, some people, there are so many products are there. There are some things like all it is confused. I, I just have the confusion on that where the product is there because all it's mixing here. But here, if you see that the sequence it is maintained. Anna? So when there is a warehouse management, it is exactly where exactly you are placing the stock, where exactly you are putting, and where you are exactly you can remove the stock. That is very easy, and you can use easily can. Um, Withdraw the stock. That means you can do uh, put away. That means placing the stock, remove. You can remove the stock from that bin. Clear? So warehouse management is a separate module. So again, when you got the stock, you are you are saying that okay, today today I'm getting the thousand pieces stocks. Then that information I'm just providing to warehouse management team. Then they can arrange the bins where exactly it is empty. There is empty bins and there is a full bins and all right. That they will be arranging that. Okay, so which in which industry it will be majorly using this warehouse management? There are a lot of production. Lot of production, okay, mm -hmm. but what kind of the material is very important because if it is oh, a yeah. steel rod, yeah. if it is steel rod, yeah, if it is steel rod, is there? Then it is an open location. I can, I can put because yes. it's a heavy product, right? I don't want to use racks and all, right? If it is suppose pharma either medicines, pharma medicines or stationery, or it may be books or anything, whatever it may be. So these are small, small, maybe small. spare parts, spare parts also, like yes. Yeah. So anything which is like we need to be stored into the proper bin, then only it is very easy. That's why if you see that in the medical shops or if you go to any pharma, okay, pharma uh, shops, there what will happen? There is a here, there are so many, so many boxes will be there. That will be called as a bin. <clears throat> okay, clear? Yes. So here we are integ integrating that the stock when I'm receiving, okay, because inventory we are receiving, right? When Once we receive the stock, then informing to the various payment team to properly put away the stock, placing the stock, okay? Clear now? Yes. Yeah, uh, wait, uh, Ravindra, I have one question. Yeah. So yeah. basically this warehouse management, uh, whatever is that one, that one also like company to company, basically what happened when I was working in one pharmaceutical company. So they yeah. have one project is basically the silver light. And under this one, they have the multiple application like ship icon, lot tracking, shipping and handling, that kind of thing. Uh -huh. And they have like multiple application is not just the under one roof. Correct, exactly, like, exactly, exactly. See, uh, that's what we just discussed last time. There is a decentralized mm -hmm. centralized. Oh, okay. You remember Central. right? So decentralized is nothing but like the third party systems connected to my system. Yeah. Okay. So what will be happen if we if I don't have suppose in SAP if you if suppose the use the client is saying that in SAP I could not able to properly track this ca carriers and uh, packing all these things. Then what they can do? They can use some FedEx. Uh, applications and all they can use for the transportations and uh, picking and uh, dist distribution to the customers that they can use in the FedEx app application. So that maybe it's a third party application. So depends on the client what process they want to be used and that process mm -hmm. where it is convenient to that. Maybe if you see that um, uh, way, okay. Uh, if you know that way by, if you, did you know that uh, there is a, if you see that uh, some location, there will be like weight, weight will be there. Weight, they are considering that for the uh, heavy vehicle. Heavy vehicle, yeah. they will mm -hmm. be taking the weight. How they are calculating, there will be like way bay. So there, they are uh, calculating that, uh, including a load, without load, without within load. Why it is required? Because on, on the road, when you are going, you must be maintain limitation weight. Okay, if it is heavy load vehicles, you should not be cross this. You cannot use this type of the roads. Okay, they might be have the four, mm -hmm. four levels and five levels, six levels, eight levels roads are there. So they must be have limitation, limited vehicles or weight vehicles should be there. So what will be using? They are using some other third party system to check that what weight it is there, loading and all. So there's yeah. different third party systems are there. That again, we they are connecting with the SAP application. Okay. Yeah, they that all. Is, yeah. That is called gotcha. like a in, interfaces, like connectivity with, between that and uh, SAP system to non-SAP systems. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
so like any any application they can use okay they can use uh, .NET and they can use Oracle they can use all this and that integrated with SAP okay. yeah that that was my recent project so I remember everything what I did uh, yeah, yeah correct <laughs> exactly so integrations yeah they must be have that okay every every product every company they are not depending only one application they are depending on that multiple applications. multiple yeah yeah, but I don't have that much uh, knowledge about ah, the that is the again uh, ah, that is again separate module with their PI integrations mm -hmm. and okay yeah. process integration process integration and uh, exchange integration okay so mm -hmm. these are the mm -hmm. modules they are taking care about how to integrate with the third party systems or not okay yeah I think they okay, use Boomi yeah they are using what Boomi Boomi the database. Boomi, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. No, not database. It is. It is like a inter in interfaces connectivity from my system to their system. How it will, how the data should be go from my system to other system. That PA and XA people will decide that. Maybe oh, that is the one. Uh, in the format of XML format, or in the format of the Notepad format. Okay, in the format of IDOC format. Okay, like mm -hmm. different different formats. Okay. Huh? Yeah. And that I worked again, on that. Uh, what is yeah. that? Which yeah, I, yeah, yeah, right. Yep. Correct. Yeah. Now coming to MMFA integration. So what is the MMFA integration here? Why it is required finance. MMFA integration? Finance. Finance. Okay. Finance. It is like why we need to finance because they have to be paid amount to the vendors. So Taxes. I just integrate. I just integrate with boss. I just, I got today this much of stock. Okay. This is the value of the stock. Okay. This is the vendor. This is the clearance which is required. So every time I need to be integrated with the finance team, I just need to be informed to that, okay, this is the stock value which is updated. So they can update into the their GL accounts. Then based on the, their general ledger accounts, their understanding language, they can update and they can pay the amounts. So again, MM and FA integration also very important. Okay. So it's generally what will happen here. It is uh, like automatic account determination. What is the account, automatic account determination? It's like a finding the what proper GL account needs to be post the value based on my process. MM, MM have the different different process, right? Scrapping, and we have that to goods receipt, to goods issue, transfer postings. Okay, like we have different different stock transporters, like different different. Based on that, finance team they will be updating the, their accounts and they will be tallying that. Okay, if they're if they are doing any fraud, like uh, the misleading of the stocks and all they can easily find it based on the automatic account Clear now? okay then mm with the pb production planning okay again to production people what it is required like uh, what components it is required what when it is required all they will be communicated to mm people and once production team they're manufacturing the product fg product then they can keep the stock into my location mm store location Okay, so there it is integrated. Clear now? Okay, so it's kind of the components and the final products. Components and final product. Okay, and any questions on this one? MM and PP? No, I'm good. No. Oh, yeah. And then quality management. What is the quality management? Okay, once I receive the stock, okay, my company have the policy that. If the stock is good quality and they have the some parameters like uh, okay if it is a five inches of the rod if it is coming exactly five meters or it is coming six meters again seven meters ten meters and the weight and length and the quality of the product all it will be validating based on the their parameters okay so that parameters will be checking by quality management team so that information you must be provided suppose you, today i got thousand pieces so this thousand pieces lot I'm just submitting to the quality management team. Boss, we got a thousand pieces. Come and check that whether the product is good or not. The quality. So based on that, they will be checking that random quality or maybe a continuous check quality. All these things they will be validating. So the quality management people they can they will be checking the quality specification whether it is reaching or not. Whether they are they are following some ISO standards, right? The standards of quality and everything they will check and they will be passing that. So in this case, we are informing that, okay, once I receive the goods, or maybe if I'm delivering to the goods to the customer, then I will do one more check of the quality before sending to the goods, right? 
clear na you were disconnected ravindra i was disconnected i don't know it's not disconnected no it's not it's good na it's not disconnected yeah, right okay so call in a way it's a quality parameters it's kind of the quality parameters they are validity before yes. we are seeing the stock okay like sales again sales when it is required maybe sto stock transfer order we are shipment to, when we are planning to create any shipment for the goods issues okay we are integrating with the std okay so shipment is generally who will do shipment and the goods issue generally ST team will do right. Deliveries will do outbound deliveries will be performed by ST team. Inbound deliveries will be performed by MMT. Okay. So here, when we are issuing to the outside, the goods when we are issuing to the outside, we are connecting to the ST team for shipment creation and uh, billing related issues. I am just connecting with the ST. Or if we have a third party process, so third party process also we are connecting with the ST, right? ST people they are connecting with to MM, right? What is the meaning of ST? What is the meaning of third party process? What is the meaning of third party procurement process? Anyone? What is the meaning of third party procurement process? Is it audible? Yes, audible. Okay. So third party procurement process is nothing but like a when I receive the customer order, okay, so I'm requesting to the supplier to go sending directly to the customer. Instead of I'm supplying to the customer, okay, my company is supplying to the customer, I'm informing to the vendor to send the goods to the customer directly. So here, the salespeople are integrating with that to my material management team. Boss, this is my order, customer order. Can you prepare, the, uh, can you buy this product and... Uh, request to the supplier to send the goods to the customer directly. Hana? Yes. Okay, you must be read all these things. Okay. The introduction part is very important, no? Okay, please please understand the each and every process, okay? Clear? Yes. Okay, and can, can, can you please share this one also with us? Sure, 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 I'll share you. Okay, okay definitely. Huh? Yeah, and STO, okay? So STO process stock transporter is there. When company to company, when I'm just distributing, there I say that uh, it is selling and uh, buying concept. When there is a two company codes are there, okay, when it is a my company code, but uh, legally the stocks which is transporting to other areas, other uh, company code, so it is the concept of buying and selling. So in that case, we are integrating with the sales people to create the shipment and outbound delivery to transport the goods to from my plant to other plant. Hana? So that is also one part of the ST and MM integration. So where there is a shipment process involved, okay, where there is a shipment process involved, that we are calling as a ST and MM integration. Okay, clear? From MM side, okay. Yes. Then maintenance, MM with PM, plan maintenance. Okay, again, for maintenance people, they need some procurement, to, so they need some pro components, right? Maybe cleaning if they want to be clean, then they are asking that can you get the uh, water tankers? So I just planning to clean today my factory. So it's kind of the maintenance. Okay, it's kind of the, if they requested some oil or some grease. Okay, some kind of the other uh, assets they want. Okay, so all this they are requesting. So in this case, I'm a plant maintenance team. They will connecting to my metal management team to get the stock. Okay. Clear? Yes. Okay. Then project systems. What is the project system? Yesterday we discussed about that. If I have the five five floors of construction building, okay. If I allotting that uh, uh, constructing to the each and every floor, so I'm just putting like a work breakdown system, like uh, each activity as a one activity, and allotting the some budget. So we are procuring the material for that. Uh, uh, WBS element that work breakdown system to allow the some stock to the to complete that activity. Correct now. So project systems are nothing but like a hey, if I have the, any project for that project, what it is needed, the sources, what it is needed, what it is required that we are buying from the vendor and we are supplying to the, that department. 
clear? Is that clear? Yes. Okay. Again, here the po point is, is something like budgeting. Okay. So they will have the, some limitations, limitation of each and every limitation of each and every activity. Right. It might be product, it might be service also. When you're talking about project system, it might be service or it might be product also. Service means what is the service? Maybe crane service. Right? So if you want to be uh, uh, if you want to be remote or sand, okay, you want to be cranes. Okay. And if you want to be remote, if you want to be build a, a pillar, then you want some cement and bricks and all. Right? So what products it is required for that project? That is. Okay, so project system is nothing but like any any kind of the project, okay, which we are uh, which they need some products from the MM side, they are integrating with the metal management model. So basically, in the organization, wherever there is the needed the product, they will be integrating with the metal management. Okay, so whoever their departments are there, all they will be integrating with me. Clear? Yes. So these are the integrations we have in the SAP, okay, with MM. Okay. Again, if you are talking about ST, PP, QM, ST, they have the different different integrations also. Okay. So basically, these are the introduction part. Okay. So for next class, we'll go ahead with SAP application. Okay. I'll just talk to Santil. Okay. So, and we'll request to provide that to the. Okay. The, they will. I will request to the provide all the SAP credentials and all. Okay, so then you can start on daily practice. Okay. Clear? Yes. Okay, then then good. And uh, we'll connect next class. When it is next class? Uh, I'm 